Hello my friends, welcome back. It's Pathfinder Kingmaker, it is episode 56. Now we can carry on making our characters. Unburdened by efficiency. Ooh, there's a weird kind of little glitchiness there. Ha! Huh. How do we fix this character? Um... Oof. <clears throat> I would suggest... I'd almost suggest taking the point index because... It would improve the modifier and grant one AC. If possible. Uh, will she actually eventually receive? I don't know if, as part of her leveling up, whether she'll actually. Yeah, increases maximum dexterity bonus allowed by armor by one. Every four levels thereafter, these bonuses increase plus one each time. <clears throat> to a maximum of minus four armor reduction check penalty and plus four increase to the maximum dexterity bonus allowed. So she can benefit from that extra point of dexterity. You know, the other choice is to just build strength and then wait. Wait until we get another ability point to build it some more. I think we'll just grab that dexterity modifier. It makes sense to me. Okay, greater shield focus. <laughs> For some reason, it's like a uh, point blank shot is uh, recommended. For some reason, that makes no sense. Interestingly, this could be useful as well. Because I'm pretty sure it works against trip as well. But anyway, greater shield focus is an easy plus one to just grab. It's not like the shield tower specialist is ever going to not have a shield. That would be very silly. What comes at level 2 with Rogue?
I think we'll just keep the wizardry going for now. I can understand why there's a kind of rogue mix here. I guess the idea was was that her general attacking would be done with the bow. And uh, you would do a lot of spell ca buff spell casting. But I think I just want to build a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Okay. <clears throat> Beast shape two. You become a medium leopard. Yeah, why would you ever do that? Mass shrink, of course. Obsidian flow. You convert a thin layer of the ground to molten glass that cools quickly. Creatures in the area take 1d6 points of fire damage per two caster levels and become entangled until they make successful strength, athletics, or mobility check. <clears throat> the ground is covered. Any creature within the area that makes a successful reflex save takes half damage and is not entangled. The ground is covered with slippery expanses and sharp shards of obsidian. The effect is difficult terrain and creatures inside the area take minus five penalty on mobility skill checks. That's interesting. It's kind of like spider web. But it hurts you as well. Oh, a good old dimension door. Actually, really great in campaigns because of, you know, there's lots of plot implications of what you could do with it. This is so dumb. This spell functions like invisibility, except it doesn't end if the subject attacks. The spell ends if the subject attacks any creature. Come on, guys.
Okay. Protection from energy. <clears throat> this spell is available. It's available to him, but he can't cast it because he hasn't got any slots. I'm almost tempted to go for mass reduced person. <clears throat> it, it dramatically reduces your damage output, but it does make your characters much harder to kill. And of course, enlarging pe person, the trade-off is slightly, slightly less armor, but vastly improved damage. Let's go with mass reduced person. Why not? I don't think I'm going to use it, but I'll take it. I'm actually tempted to switch to magic. The problem is, the problem with magic missile is that there are so many enemies that are immune to it. The problem with ear piercing scream is enemies that don't have ears can obviously not be affected by it. But D&D has always known that magic missile was overpowered, so it's been it's it's a spell that has seen some nerfing. Okay, I think that'll do. That's a nice, that Obsidian floor is very nice. It's going to be a great partner to, uh, <clears throat> to my web. The fact that it's just basically a better version of web that also does damage. Still not as bad as... It's still not going to be as good as Grease. Grease is just insanely good, but... Hey, we're not using Grease. Hmm... 
And here I've got the Dirge of Doom. Plus four to charisma. Increasing her bardic powers. Mm, communal delay poison. Oh, she can learn haste. Haste is a great spell. Especially considering that it doesn't last very long. Haste is a great spell. I don't know if I want to start using the extra, extra toolbar. Let's put those away. Actually, I'm not. I'm not that interested in inspiring competence. Sweet. Uh, extra castings of haste is very nice. Okay, Wisdom is actually the only important stat for him. He's gained Holy Lance! <clears throat> Not actually that useful, let's be honest. Great against the undead, I guess. Duration one round. Well, should be four rounds. Speaking of which, I should probably have a look at his spell book because he's probably got some more slots now. Maybe. Nope. Nope. Oh. Let's add another fireball. <coughs> okay, that's weird. It won't let me add one. I'm only allowed to memorize one fireball.
You gain plus one luck on attack rolls, weapon damage rolls, strength checks, strength based skill checks for every three caster levels you have. Not really helpful for a character I'm trying to keep out of combat. Go for a big fat level of protection from energy communal. Okay, let's go for that. It could be useful. Favored terrain. do but pump up his dexterity. First world is selectable. That makes you wonder if you're going to go there at some point. This is not really that much of an exciting selection of choices here. Let's go with underground. It's a lot of caves and stuff that we end up in. I reckon at some point you must go to the first world. That that's the only reason that can explain that being there. He still doesn't have any uh, any spell slots. No, he's got one. He now has one spell slot.
Okay. Cat's grace is perfect for him. Cat's Grace is perfect for this guy. Since he's a dex caster. Uh, well, dex DPS. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get back to exploring. side of this bridge quickly. Okay. Alright, that's one side of the map cleared. Let's go and have a look at the other side. That totally looks like it's something. Okay, <clears throat> don't think we're going to be running into any more level 16 dragons, here's hoping. Oh. More defenseless doge. So it looks fast. Ooh. This is the edge of the map. there's anything in that corner that we've somehow missed a way to climb up or is that just aha oh owlbears I remember owlbears very scary a long time ago. Admittedly, that was a big hit, uh, a big critical hit there. Ding. Oh, nice money. I thought it looked like this was climbable. And lo, it was climbed.
we're gonna make some serious money when we head back to uh, when we head back to town, which will be soon. Wadding. More target practice. Oof. You know, if one of your allies exploded like that, I don't think that you would survive the morale check. <laughs> I'd be running for my life. I would be running for my sorry sack of a life. Wadding! Mm, a helmet. Some money. A dagger. My ranger finally has a spell casting slot. It's funny how the level up process just doesn't actually mention things that are important, like when you gain extra attacks, or when you gain additional spell slots. Okay, I think we're done. This was a good map, we found a lot of stuff here. And we'll obviously have to come back at some point to deal with the dragon. But, you know. <clears throat> when the enemy has an 8 level advantage over you. And every swing of your weapon <clears throat> needs a 20 to connect. I think, uh, I think that's a battle for another time. That is a battle for another time. Can I claim this? Claim it in the name of the Emperor. We have successfully returned to base. Okay. Let's divest all the stuff we found. We should also expand the barony, since that is something that always needs doing. We have received a letter from Bravoy concerning Oleg's trading post. I must admit, Lady Germandi was not pleased by your request to surrender jurisdiction over Oleg's trading post to you. The Aldori take matters of allegiance and loyalty very seriously. Nevertheless, I was able to convey your position and clear the air. We will be able to persuade the Aldori not to demand a year's worth of Oleg's taxes from you. However, repairing the road falls entirely to us. You allow me to speak, I can explain everything.
And I entered the shop of this half-blood seeking some reminder of Keonin, and what did I discover there? My very own dagger. Let him speak. Anger will anger will not find the truth. Where did you find this carcass and dagger? <clears throat> I have nothing to say. Perhaps that's logical. Okay. Glorious quest. Seems reasonable. How may I serve you, Your Grace? Right, let's, uh... Let's work on the Smurf village. <laughs> We've got r mushrooms to erect. Okay, she's not ready for another day. Man, there is so much to do! <laughs> and no, no people available to do it. It's just interesting how you can only have five advisors, but you do have, like, many more staff members available. Apparently, if you use a mercenary as your treasurer, <clears throat> you take a, uh, a penalty for doing that. All right, hand over the wedge. Okay, he gave me exactly 400 for it, which is what I paid for it. Some of the five items are still missing. find out that there's a bloody seventh somewhere.
Hmm. Right, let's put the story stuff away. Stuff to read at a later time. I suppose you could just keep this stuff on you. I mean, it doesn't weigh anything. Funnily enough, all the plot stuff doesn't weigh anything. Oh, I guess the books weigh a couple of pounds. I guess there's one more. <clears throat> Some of these collectibles are like... They're either five or seven. Whenever the wearer of this cloak makes a successful bite attack, it deals an additional 1d6 cold damages. Cold damages! Cold damages! And trips the target. The uh, the opposite the opposite headgear that lets you uh, do severe damage with channel negative energy. Interestingly, the cloak of the winter wolf would be useful. We do, we do make a bite attack with this character. Why not? These cloaks of resistance plus one can go away. Because we get one bite attack. And we can buy a rage power that actually increases that to two bite attacks. I didn't take it on, on my level up. But... Uh, Yeah, we could we could potentially get two bite attacks, and if we add one d6 cold to them and the possibility of tripping the enemy, that is actually pretty significant. Because being tripped is just an invitation to being killed in this game. That's why Grease is so powerful. The last thing you want is to be tripped, because it's opportunity attacks galore. I suppose you could uh, 
go quite bestial as a berserker. With lots of clawing and biting. But you'd have to find a way to increase the uh, the chance that those abilities connect. Right, let's get rid of all this stuff. It's junk. Arcane Protector! That's, that's the second one of those I've found. Never gonna need a plus two half plate. Can't think of anyone who's going to need a sling. Unfortunately, this is a very low quality armor. Flaming Earthbreaker, plus two. It's nice, but I just, I'm not really into two handed weapons. I don't think anyone's going to be using that either. The fact that that's plus three means it could be useful. I'm not that bothered about three casts of meta magic, and I'm not really that bothered about sickening people either. Go ahead and get rid of all the food. I'm really not interested in uh, making the food recipes because they're just not. They just don't give much of a benefit, frankly. Cloak of Resistance, plus one. Bracers, plus one. Not really useful anymore. Plenty of better things to equip. <clears throat> the old Troll Reaper. Okay. I'll do. <laughs> that hat makes her carry capacity insane. It's hilarious. Like four hundred free pounds of carrying. Let's go ahead and buy some more camping supplies. What I'm really looking for is 
a bow. A good long bow. Well, these guys have not updated their uh, their wares for some time. And the last thing I want to do before we finish up is go and visit that woman whose child we rescued. Here it is, shock longbow. It's a that's a genuine damage improvement. Deal. Lucky longbow with its high critical threat. But this is going to do vastly more damage. Plus 14. Plus 12. Yeah, that'll do. Gets an extra plus two because it's a bow. Slightly less damage than the crossbow, but the crossbow can be passed on. What weapon he's using is not really important. It's just important that it's not a... Uh, Not a melee weapon. It's the old mallet of woe. Huh. Yeah, that is a second arcane protector. So now I have a question. Is it possible to dual wield them? Especially with someone like a rogue. 21. 24. Yeah, it does work. <laughs> How interesting. So you can dual wield them. And therefore create someone who is going to be very difficult to harm. Now, a second arcane protector is never going to be as good as a shield. But we might encounter a character in the future that is uh, of the dual wielding sort. And there it would be quite useful. Finesse wielding is uh, good for um, this character. It makes an interesting secondary weapon. Because you gain the eight, obviously without without dual wielding skill, you're not going to land the second hit. But you you don't really care. Effectively, it's a shield for someone who can't use a shield. And that's quite reasonable. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And this. Uh, 
Okay, we're really out of time, so that's it for now. <clears throat> I'll go find the quest giver in the next episode. We'll do a little bit of cleaning up. We'll also get a sleep in because our uh, characters are probably tired. And uh, we'll go from there. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys next time.